Deb and I both grew up in homes that were very generous. So we understood generosity from a very early age. When we became married, we wanted to carry that on. That was probably in our DNA, generosity. But I think for the first few years of our lives, we were really, uh, I would say I was a 90-10 guy. I wanted to make a lot of money so that my 10% to God was a big number. Well, you can imagine what I had planned for the 90%. And thanks to a couple of old, older mentors that came alongside of me and really guided me along, they opened my eyes up to this whole concept of stewardship. It really means we're just the managers. We don't really own anything. So when you understand that, it puts a whole new spin and a whole new context on how you live life. I think we began to uh, learn these concepts and came home and applied them to our lives. Uh, we experienced the joy of giving. So this journey for us has probably been a 15, you know, we're in, into it 15 or 20 years. And a number of years ago, uh, of course, that glaring question always comes up, how much is enough? If I'm really the steward, how much is enough? It was interesting because we were fortunate enough to uh, meet uh, some other entrepreneurs who were struggling with the same issues. We've just agreed that we understand the accountability piece is very important. And we all understand that money is probably our, could be our biggest downfall. There are actually guys in the group that will allow others of us to set their salary. And maybe that's a, too strong a word, but that we give them um, strong guidance on what we think is a, an appropriate lifestyle. And many of them could live way beyond those numbers, but we've just chosen to, to live at that, that range. Several years ago, we were in an acquisition mode and we came on an opportunity to build industrial seating. It had some, some of the same technology we were using in our other business, so we thought it would be a good fit. And it's a fairly straightforward process and somewhat labor intensive. This uh, analogy that you should have a generous life, and life is an acrostic. L-I-F-E, it stands for you should be generous with your labor, you should be generous with your influence, you should be generous with your financial resources, and you should be uh, generous with your expertise. When we understood that, I began to look at our businesses and say, these are, these are resources that God has given us, and how can we use them not only to create treasure, but to create uh, social capital and spiritual capital. God really convicted me that generosity is much more than just writing a check. This was a new thing for us. We had never had a business in a prison before. The first time I went to the prison and heard those gates slam behind me, your heart skips a beat. You're like, this is for real. It, it's an unusual bunch of guys or inmates that we have working for us uh, at the prison. They're. Uh, they've committed the worst crimes known to society. I ended up being an accomplice to uh, taking someone's life. I took someone's life who didn't deserve to be taken. I have a, a life sentence. The jury convicted me of second degree murder intentional. So I got 13 years and I've done six of it so far. It came to us that we needed a big vision for these guys to grab onto. The vision we cast for them was this. We want to have the best prison in the United States of America. They looked at me like I was some kind of a man from outer space. I, we thought he was crazy. Like, <laughs> this guy, he's... <laughs> you know, at first, that's, that's what we thought, you know. Every couple of weeks, we have what we call a life lesson. It may be uh, how to be a good father. It may be uh, lessons on finance. 
uh, it's lessons on relationships. In one of our life lessons, we uh, presented this whole concept of generosity and challenged them that we would match dollar for dollar any dollar that they gave to uh, one of a number of charities and we gave them a list. It was amazing the amount of monies that these prisoners uh, gave to charity and what was probably even more fun is most of the charities that they gave to were charities that were that existed to help the victims of the crime that they committed. Not too long ago he was in our living area. You know I've never seen a volunteer do anything like that. He's come to church with us. He's come to banquets that we've had. You know he's, he's very involved and you can tell that he that he's invested. Seeing the motivation they have to help you out, it makes you want to help other people out. You know, so he's proving to, to me and to the rest of us that, man, if you set your heart to something, if you really fight for it, and if, you know, you're focused on it, it can happen. Pete, I believe that his, he has a desire um, to see us succeed. And the most important thing I've learned through this journey of gen generosity uh, is the component of faith. Um, it's, it's all out of gratitude, and it all began with what Christ did for us.